Hi there, I'm Shirley, and I would like to show you how I take well-known songs and re-lyric them. Take out the original lyrics, put in new ones to make the song about something totally different. I've been doing this on my YouTube channel now for about a year, uh, with a bunch of songs mostly to do with COVID-19 and some about other current events. And I've had a few people asking me, well, what's the process that I use to change the lyrics of a song entirely? It's something that I encourage you to try and do because it is really, really fun. And if you follow a process, it shouldn't be too difficult. It's also great to exercise your creativity muscles. I think the thing I like most about re-lyricing songs, it gives me tight parameters to work with. If you're making your own song from scratch, or our own poem or story from scratch, there are no rules. Whereas with re-lyricing songs, you want people to recognize the original song within the new song that you've created. So there's the challenge. How do I take a song that everyone's familiar with, turn it into something completely new, while at the same time respecting the original song and making it shine clearly through the new lyrics? It's a challenge, but it's fun. So when I re-lyric songs, I have about six different steps that I follow. And what I'll do is I'll break them into chapters down in my video. So if you want to re-watch this again anytime and go over certain steps, it should be easy for you to find the different chapters. So here we go. Here are my six steps on how to re-lyric a well-known song to be about something of your choice instead. Step one, choose your song. Now, easier said than done. I like a lot of songs, but I really can't sing them. I like a lot of songs that are really quite complicated, and I know that I'd never be able to follow the melody line very well. I know that there's no way I would do that song justice. So when you choose a song, don't just choose a song that you like. Choose a song that will be of interest to the people that you're wanting to sing it for. Make sure you also choose a song that you can hear the vocal patterns in. You can hear the syllables really clearly. You're able to actually sing that song if you're actually planning to sing it. Ask yourself, is this a song that I'm going to be able to copy effectively? For example, I leave hard rock, rap and heavy metal songs alone because I know that I just don't have it in me to actually hear the, the vocal structure in it. So it's going to be very difficult for me to copy it when I'm writing new lyrics. Another part of choosing your song is getting to know it well. Listen to it many times, and once you've heard it enough, listen to it some more. Dream that song, hum that song when you're going to work, have it in your head constantly, because by doing that, you're going to be able to hear the different nuances in the song really easily. You'll know how to break down the structure of the lyrics, and the more you know it, the better you'll be able to copy it and re-lyric it. Step two. So you've chosen your song, now you want to think of, well, what do I want to re-lyric this song to actually be about? Choose your new theme. And when you choose the theme, think, does it fit with the overall mood of the song I'm going to do? For example, I'm not going to take a really, really mournful song to be about something very happy, unless I'm wanting that contrast for humor's sake. If you think of the first song that I stuck on this channel, uh, Do Re Mi from Sound of Music, I re it to be about COVID-19. The reason I chose it was because in the movie, Maria the nun, the governess, she was using a bright, happy moment with children to teach them how to sing. Now, when I wrote this song, New Zealand had just gone into lockdown. We were all grappling with how do we do this whole COVID-19 social distancing thing. It was new for all of us. And so to me, it was a perfect fit using a song which is very positive and someone teaching something to others to help me get my own head around what the criteria were for lockdown. And in the end, it became a song that I could use to teach others as well, but mostly give them a laugh. Neil Sedaka's song, Breaking Up Is Hard To Do, is a very cheerful song about something difficult. And so I re that one to also be quite a cheerful song, but about waking up, waking up is hard to do, when you're not going physically to work anymore and it's all happening at home. The Backstreet Boys song, I Want It That Way, speaks of longing and being forlorn and tell me why I can't have this. And so I made that to be someone feeling exactly the same. Why can't I go to my hairdresser because all the shops are closed? Please, husband, when you cut my hair, please cut it that way in the magazine. Don't cut it any other way. So try and match the theme as much as you can. To me, that creates a much more convincing and stronger re lyric song. Step three. Can the original song or video 
contribute towards the new theme and content in some way. For example, when I re-lyricked Do Re Mi, there's a scene where they're going up, uh, running over the hills, saying uh, tea, a drink with jam and bread. Now, I wanted to use this movement, uh, so of course I made it watch TV, drink lots of wine. Why not? I'm not much of a wine drinker, but because the video fit the theme so perfectly, I just had to incorporate it. Also in that video, there's a scene of them running around a fountain, so I used it to say, keep your bubble tightly closed, and another scene where they all run past a statue and each one pats it on the head. So we're all talking about touching and things, so everything you touch, beware. I was aware of the beautiful clash that those two had, and a bunch of people commented saying, ha ha, you've got them touching things, but you're singing this. It was intentional. And when you do that, it just adds a richness to your re video. So for the song Favourite Things, I used the inspiration of the video and the title. I kept the title the same. And in the video, they're all in their pyjamas staying in bed. So I made it about favourite things to do when you're stuck at home because of this virus. In Dorothy's song from The Wizard of Oz, there's a scene where she gives Toto the dog a little cuddle. And so that's where I changed the lyrics to fit that scene what I thought was in a quite funny way. Uh, she said, uh, I really need some human touch. The animals have had enough. I'm going crazy. Now, you may not be using video in your songs. You may just be wanting to change the lyrics. You can still use this process. Are there any lyrics that match what you're trying to communicate? For example, don't stand so close to me. I didn't have to change that chorus at all for the song. Don't stand, don't stand so close to me. It was perfect for what I was singing about then. So my suggestion is, Listen to the lyrics. If you're using the video, watch the video carefully and think, what can I keep the same that is just going to add to your new theme in a beautiful way, either through similarity or through forced contrast? Step four, create the key phrase. Now, the key phrase may be the hook or the chorus. It's the earworm, I guess, that you want people to be able to keep humming long after they've heard your new lyrics. And to me, the way to do that well is to bear in mind the original lyrics and keep them really similar by paying attention to the syllables and end sounds. For example, I took off Enya's song Orinoco Flow, which is one of my favorite songs, actually. And in that, she sings, sail away, sail away, sail away, da, 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 three syllables repeated. I wanted to keep that as similar as possible I changed it to stay away, stay away, stay away, instantly recognizable. It kept the s starting sound, and of course the last word was the same. Syllables are so important. Do your very best to keep the key phrase with the same number of syllables and the same syllable emphasis as the original. This was the biggest challenge for me with supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I had to plot out in my mind and whatever I came up with had to meet that rhythm. And I also wanted to start with the s sound, ideally super, and then the s sound at the end. So super califragilistic expialidocious turned into super nasty cataclysmic COVID-19 virus. Exactly the same number of syllables, similar beginning, similar end. That to me is a key to success in re things. Also make sure that your key phrase is unforced and memorable. Don't add a word just because it fits. It's got to fit, but also be something that you would say even if it wasn't the lyric of a song. If it's not something that you would hear someone say, it's probably worth rethinking it. Rhyme for the sake of rhyme? It really doesn't work. Number five. Now it's time to write the lyrics. You've got a song in mind. You've got a theme in mind. You want to be able to match up with the original as much as possible. You've got a key phrase in your head. You're keeping things as close as possible to the original where you can. Now it's time to flesh out the lyrics and make them shine. I like to think of the key points I want to put in the song first. When I did the cover of uh, Dolly Parton's Jolene, I called it Chlorine. Again, hear the Jolene, Chlorine, ending the same way, syllables and ending, really important point. But before I started writing the song in earnest, I had the chlorine, 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 chlorine. I had that in my head already. But then it was at the time when um, people were talking about possibly ingesting bleach to help. So that was my starting idea. But then I did some research. I looked up what were different ways that people were 
considering to fight the virus that were maybe less orthodox. And so I wrote down a huge list of them from what I could see. And that's what I referred to as I wrote the lyrics. So it's a good idea to have some key points. Then what I do is I have the lyrics of the original song and I have the key points and I listen to that song again and again and again and just kind of sing along with it and play with ideas. And very often if one fits, then I will note it down. What I often do is I will make a document on my computer with the original song on the left and space for me to write my new lyrics on the right because that way I can refer to the original while writing the new. Check, have I got the syllables right? Have I got the endings right? Have I kept the heart of that lyric very similar and recognizable? Once again, I'm going to emphasize syllables and end sounds. They are your best friend when you are relyricking a song. They are what makes it sound authentic. Think of the mood also of the original lyrics. Uh, you know, songs songs carry a structure. They, they tell a story and, you know, there are high points and there are low points, loud and soft parts. Do your best to make your new lyrics fit that mood as well. It will definitely make it much more authentic and believable. Keep your lyrics sounding unforced and natural, but lyrics do need to rhyme most of the time. And if you need help with the rhyme, I'm not getting any promotion for this, it's just the site that I use, rhymezone.com. There you can type in any word and it will come up with a list of rhymes by syllable and near rhymes as well if you're really stuck. I tend to sit on my lyrics for a day or two and I often, when I read them over, I think, does it sound forced? Does it sound natural? If I stumble as I'm reading it, that's usually a signal for me. It probably should change. And I also like to think, would somebody say that? If I would never hear someone saying that, it just doesn't sound natural, I tend to rewrite it. So yeah, the next day test, I really recommend as well. A lyric may sound amazing as you're writing it. If you can't remember it the next day, that to me is a sign that it's probably not that strong. Or if you're reading it the next day and you're struggling to find the rhythm as you're reading it, or it just sounds unnatural, probably good to have another look at it. And believe me, I've changed so many lyrics like that. If you're intending to re-lyric a song and match it to the original video, you've got other things to think about as well. Look at the mouth movements in the video. Now, it's really a challenge, but it's also fun. What I've done in that case, like with all my Sound of Music and other videos that I've done, I've listened to it with the volume down and just watched their mouths. What word could that be? It's hello in the original. Maybe go slow, is that the same? No, the O. So play around and make sure that the mouse movements of the characters, if you're going to use the video, match what you're going to say. And believe me, I've written some lyrics that would have been perfect, but when I've played them alongside the video with the sound down, you can see that it doesn't work and I've had to bin them and start again. But it's really satisfying if you can get someone to say something and make it look like they're saying it. It's a lot of listening again to your lyrics while watching the original video and just checking that it meets the mouth movements. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but try and get the basic shapes. Look in front of a mirror while you're saying words and see what your mouth does for the different sounds. And you'll soon get an idea of the kinds of sounds you can substitute because it doesn't ever have to be exactly the same. You know, it's one thing to explain how I do things, it's another thing to show you. So what I've done is I have got a song that I have not done any re of. It's a short song, and I thought I would show you exactly the process. So I'm going to go through it now and try and re a song. Okay, so one project I'm working on currently is taking nursery rhymes and changing them to be about COVID-19. Uh, I am a teacher and nursery rhymes are actually something I studied as well, and so it makes sense for me to do that. It's also really short, so I can show you my process. I have chosen a nursery rhyme here and I've chosen the key phrase and that's all I've done. So, Itsy Bitsy Spider. You'll remember that I said that I make a document where I put the original lyrics on the left and then I make a new space here where I can write my new lyrics on the right. So I'm just going to make a new text box and arrange that so it doesn't move. Okay, I do have a key phrase in mind already and that's all I've got currently. Itsy Bitsy Virus. That's all I have. So what process do I go through? Okay, I think of the syllables and I think of the end line. I would like to keep the spout the same. Now, I said that I tend to use the, um, the website called RhymeZone. I think it's brilliant. And so if I type in spout and search, it's finding rhymes. Words that rhyme. Now, I'm interested in the one syllable words because spout is only one syllable. Pout. 
I like shout, doubt, snout. What about a virus going up my snout? Something like that. And rhymes will have a, se a second one. So what about snout and out? I'll keep in mind, maybe shout, doubt. Okay, so I've got them in mind. So itsy bitsy spider, da 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 da. Itsy bitsy virus came flying into my snout. Came flying, mm -hmm. flew right into my snout. Itsy bitsy virus. It crept into my snout. Snout meaning nose. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Now. I don't worry too much about the middle rhymes, but you can. I mean, if you really want to be a purist, find something that matches rain. I'm not going to worry so much about that. Da, 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 da. Something out. Maybe I should have worn a mask to keep that virus out. No, it's too many syllables. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Put on a mask to keep your virus out. Something like that. Put on a mask to keep, instead of virus, I don't want too much repetition. Put on them. I'm just going to keep it in there for now. To keep the virus out. And I'll revisit it. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Well, rain straight away, I can think pain, but I'm going to use rhyme zone again. It's a really handy tool. So, rain. Again, I'm looking for the one syllable words, and the bold ones tend to be more. Gain, perhaps. You know, if we all wear a mask, then we will all gain something like that. But again, you want it to not sound forced. You want it to sound natural. Maybe wearing a mask can be seen as a pain. Uh, maybe if you're vain, you don't want to do it. I will probably use a gain because that's a word you can use a lot with. But maybe pain. All right, let me go back to this. It's a bitsy virus. You notice how I'm singing the song again uh, with my new lyrics just to make sure that it's it's working. Itsy bitsy virus, it crept into my snout. Put on a mask to keep the virus out. Yes, it is sun, and it can be a pain. Um, no, it won't hurt. It won't hurt. I know that it's... Whoop, it's a pain. But do you want to stay at... Home again. Now that's not enough syllables, but something like that. Um, itsy bitsy virus crept into my snout. Put on a mask to keep the virus out. No, it won't hurt. I know that it's a pain. But do you want to give the bugs away again? Something like that. Okay. So there you have. Oops, I'm trying to zoom in for you. So I've taken the original lyrics, I've had them side by side, and these are the new lyrics. These may not be my final copy, but that just shows you the process. Uh, for Usually for nursery rhymes, I won't put it next to the original because it's so short. But for songs, this is the exact process I go through. Um, I may tweak this in time. Uh, watch out on my channel, you may see the song coming soon. I am actually about to put out a whole series of shorts of nursery rhymes, each less than a minute, each dealing with COVID. And this one will come at some point, and you'll see if it's changed or not from here. I don't know, because I've really literally just written this now. Okay, so that's how I do it in real time. Right, you're getting there. Step six, revisit and tweak. Test the lyrics over the original song constantly, constantly. Sing the new lyrics while you hear the old lyrics. And if you find that they're singing and you're not, or you're singing and they're not, it's not a close match. See if you can tweak it so that the times when the original song has singing is when you're singing. And when there's silence, it's for both your lyrics and the original lyrics. As you're listening to your lyrics and as you're ruminating over them, think, do they sound natural or forced? Remember, that's a big thing with rhyme as well. Don't add a rhyming word just because it rhymes. It's got to make sense, and it's got to be a natural making sense, something that you would imagine someone could say. I climb trees, I hear some bees. Yes, they rhyme, but really, is that the kind of thing that you want to have in a song just because they rhyme? Each line matters in your song, or does it? Are you adding any lines just for fill? I, I don't mean the guy fill, I mean to fill up the song or to create the space. My suggestion is set that really high standard for yourself. Don't just fill a line because it's there. Make it have meaning. 
I've had to really work some songs in the past because there have been redundant lines that I've just put in there to fill the space. My challenge to you, if you want to write a really authentic sounding re song, every line must have an important thing to say of its own. Don't have two lines say what one line could. And if you've got a redundant line, think what's something I haven't said yet that I can put in this space instead. And finally, as you're listening to your song, did it cover everything you wanted to? You may have that list of the things that you'd hoped to put in your song originally. Tick it off as you go. Oh heck, I've just left, I've left a really important concept out. So then I would look through my lyrics and think, well, what, what isn't as strong? Could I maybe change that to meet the new lyric? And so I've had to do that a few times as well. Well, there you have it, just like that, six steps and you've got a re lyric song. This is something that takes practice. You get better as you go. Um, I have been doing this for many years and it still takes me a long time to do, but it's fun. If you would like to give this creative avenue a go, I really recommend you do it. It is so rewarding personally to be able to put something out that is so similar to the original, yet says something completely different. It really is fun. So I've decided to put out a little challenge to spur you on and help you get started with this. I want to invite you to re-lyric a really well-known popular song. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. Now this song is in the public domain, so you don't need to worry about copyright things because that's, believe me, a topic for another video, which I'm happy to make one day. Uh, but I want you to think about this song, when Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, and re-lyric as much or as little of it as you like. What I'm going to do is put the music for the song at the end of this video. And if you would like to sing your re -lyriced lyrics over the top, just plug in headphones, listen to the track, record yourself, and then you can send the song to me. I have got an email address you can send it to, uh, shirley at shirleycan.com. You can uh, put it up on YouTube if you want to and just send me the link or otherwise send me the file as long as it's not too huge through Dropbox or something like that. If you just want to write the lyrics and send them to me, perfect as well. I do also have a Facebook group, uh, Shirley Serban, it says it's pronounced Sherban, but look up Shirley Serban on Facebook and you can send it to me there via message if you want to as well. So think about the lyrics of this when Johnny comes marching home again. Da 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 Really important that you get a key phrase there. I've thought of one and you may want to use this as a starting point. When we can all leave our homes again, hurrah, hurrah. Yeah, keep the hurrah if you want to. You can use that if you want to, or you can start something new. Write as much or as little of it as you want to. So what I will do is at the end of April, I will collate what's come in, and if there are any, and I will put them together to make a new song. And I will give credit where credit's due. If you want to sing on it and be shown, and if I select your piece, you will be on it. Uh, otherwise, if you just want to write your lyrics and send it, I can sing your part and I will give you credit for it as well. Let's make up a brand new video from When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again. That's my challenge to you. Get it in before the end of April, uh, that's 2021, because I will then work on it in May and uh, see what we can do with the final results. So there's my challenge. Watch this video again if you need to go over those points anymore. I remember six points. I can't stress enough about the syllables and the end sounds. That's probably the biggest thing, as well as thinking of the suitability of the song and what can you take from the original to really feed into that new lyric in a way that it's going to honor the original song and make the new lyric so much stronger. Have fun creating, share your progress, if you want to share some of your lyrics as you're coming through with them down in the comments, feel free. Be aware others may copy them. If, if you don't mind that, share away. And uh, let's just encourage each other in our creative process. We are all creative. It just takes practice to get really good at it. And so here's my invitation for you to get creative, get practicing, and I believe you can create something pretty amazing. Cool. Thank you for watching. See you next time.